As the governor recall election is quickly approaching, many are still wondering what is at stake. San Jose State University political science professor Donna Crane joins me now to tell us what we need to know. So let's start off with the basics. Donna, first, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So can you just explain why we're having this recall election in the first place? Yeah, California is an unusual state in many ways, including politically. California law allows uh, a small number of people to submit, basically collect signatures and submit uh, a petition to recall an elected official. And that was done successfully this year. And so now we have... Uh, we have a ballot question before us coming September 14th about whether to recall uh, Gavin Newsom and if he's recalled, who should replace him. Okay, so a lot of voters are already receiving their mail-in ballots. What can they expect to see on these ballots? Right, you're right. So ballots are in the mail. I haven't gotten mine yet, but I did get a notice today about where it is, so that's exciting. Uh, ballots should be landing this week, and they will see two questions. The first question will ask, should Governor Gavin Newsom be recalled and removed from office? And that's a straight yes, no answer. And then there's a second question, which is optional. If he is removed, who do you think should succeed him? And there are 46 candidates who have filed. It's, a, it's a sort of a free for all. And so voters will have the opportunity to pick their preference among 46. And the candidate in, on that list, if Newsom is recalled, will take the governorship. So they do not have to win a majority vote. They can win, you know, four votes as long as everybody else gets three or fewer. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so basically, if you're answering no to the first question, then you obviously don't need to answer the second question on the ballot. Well, that has become a subject of some controversy here in the state, right? So second, I mean, the second question is optional. If you vote no on the first question, many people think, I don't need to vote at all. I don't need to make a choice on the second one. Uh, and that is a valid approach. But the downside is that then if the governor is recalled, if your position doesn't prevail in the first question, then you will have had no say in who selects the next governor, right? So people voting no on the first question presumably are Newsom supporters. And there is a, you know, quite an interesting list of candidates to succeed him, including some very far right and some super fringe candidates. So, you know, a lot of my friends are debating if there are no voters in the first question, should they or shouldn't they uh, fill out the second question? It's there's a little bit of strategic thinking happening here. OK, interesting. So speaking of the candidates, are there political party preferences listed on the ballot? Will you have that information when you vote? This has been a chronic problem in politics forever, that you can describe how you want to be identified. So some people, for example, who are professional elected officials have chosen to list themselves as like businessman or entrepreneur. Um, and so that is the area that's getting a lot of attention right now is, you know, among 46, if we're not familiar with who they are, are voters going to pick based on that description? And since that description is self-defined, you know, what does that mean for the process? And what's it going to take for Newsom to remain governor? I'm sure he's thinking of all the options right now. I think this election is going to come down to turnout. And turnout comes down to motivation and ease. Uh, at the moment, the polls are looking really tight, even within the margin of error, with a slight edge towards Newsom retaining his seat. Um, there are a couple of reasons that's happening, in my opinion. First of all, every pollster has a special sauce that they use to decide how to assess who is a likely voter, right? That is not a precise science. There are a lot of ways you can go about answering that question. And this is one of the things that went wrong in the polling presidentially in 2016 and 2020, is that pollsters were, they underestimated some voters and overestimated other voters. So I think that is this one thing that's happening among some of the polls we're seeing today. The second thing that's happening, though, is that Republicans are much more highly motivated in this election than Democrats are. OK, so you did mention turnout. And yes, some of us are receiving our mail in ballots. Do you think we're going to see fewer people actually going to the polls in person just for mere safety purposes with everything going on with COVID and coronavirus? Uh, I absolutely think we'll see fewer people at the polls. You know, for some people, that might be a COVID question. For other people, it's a, simply a matter of convenience. Um, I, for example, am fully vaccinated. I'm, of course, very careful, but I'm not overwhelmingly concerned about contracting the virus. But I am uh, busy, and so I'm going to complete my ballot and mail it in. 
So if Newsom is recalled, when would the new governor take office? Uh, it's immediate. It's, it's, it's really kind of a um, kind of an exciting slash uh, crazy process. And when can we expect to see results on election night? Ah, that's a good question. Um, you know, hopefully we would see some results on election night. There's, you know, there's a possibility it could stretch out a little longer if it's close. Um, we now have lots of experience uh, nationally with seeing uh, results come in a little slowly, just county by county. But, you know, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll know something on election night. All right. Well, we are counting down the days to September 14th. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We'll have more news and weather coming up right after.